أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى وسلم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهدي لولا أن هدانا الله نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد وأحييكم بتحية الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters after asking Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his protection against the shaitan the plenty enemy of mankind I, I start this lecture for today in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah, the one who guide us to Al-Islam, had it not been his guidance, you and I wouldn't have become Muslims. And I bear witness that it's not worthy of praise or worship except Allah and Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Then I send the greetings of peace this is also the greetings of paradise, and it's also a sunnah that is incumbent upon us as Muslim when we meet each other or we enter our dwelling to greet one another as Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Barakatuh. I pray to Almighty Allah to forgive us in this gathering and also to take care of our affairs. Those who are sick, and those who have problems, and those who have passed away, we are asking Azawajal and may Allah forgive them and grant them his mercy. And those of us who are still breathing, still alive, we pray to Almighty Allah to be pleased with us and accept us, and also continue to guide us to the best so that he, we will gain his uh, acceptance. I go straight to the main lecture. The topic of today is about yaqeen and tawakkul. That is to have complete belief or firm belief and tawakkul also reliance upon Allah SWT. And when we talk about belief, Iman as part of the article of faith as Muslims, we should believe that To believe in Allah, the oneness of Allah alone. That there is none worthy of praise or worship except Allah alone. And to believe in all the prophets, to believe in the revealed books, to believe in the angels, to believe in the predestination, Qadr wa Qadr. And these are beliefs that we should it should be part and parcel of us. And also, everything that we do in our life, belief comes first, and then reliance upon Allah SWT. When you believe in something, you have to rely on Allah SWT. As Allah said in the last testament that he has sent to mankind, that is the Quran, he says, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَا لَا وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Those who believed, those believers, those who have already believed, to whom the people or any people, the good, uh, the hypocrites or the bad people said, verily people have gathered against you or an army has gathered against you or there is something that someone is trying to threaten you due to your belief. Therefore, he said, fear them or fear this thing, which is only increase them in faith. And those people that we are told, or they say to them, in people have gathered for you, or they plotted something for you, fear them. But 
the people, the believers, when this statement is referred to, when it's say, uh, pronounced to them, fazadatum iman, fazadahum imana, and it increased them in faith. They they strengthen, they they stand firm in their faith. Okalu, and they re they repeat these statements. Whenever you are in a shock or in a worry, or you are you are you are afraid of something, or someone threatening you something, just say, "Hasbun Allah wa ni'm al wakil." Allah, He is the best disposer of affairs. That is is sufficient for for us. Allah said, "Fanqalabu bi ni'mati min Allah wa fadl," so that they will return with the grace and bounty from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Lam yamsasum su. They will never be harmed or touched by any difficulty or harm. Watabau ridwan Allah, Allah hu fadil azim. And Allah said, Allah is the owner of the great bounty. In another ayah, where Allah said, in one of the uh, battles uh, of confederation, we call the confederation, Surah Al Ahzab, we are in. When the believers saw what Allah SWT promised them and the Rasul, they also confirmed in their faith, Allah Allah has spoken the truth and the Rasul, nothing increased them in guidance except their faith. And it's only added to their faith and to their submission to the will of Allah SWT. And another ayah, Allah said, وَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى الْحَيُّ الْقَيُّومِ Rely on Allah SWT, the ever-living God that will never die. Allah does not go through the process that we're going through death. Allah is the first, he has no beginning, and he's the last, he has no ending. So death does not overtake him. For us, death overtake take us. So for the, the best person to, to rely on, Holy and solely is Allah SWT, not a human, neither a witch doctor or neither someone out there who, who claim to have supernatural power. And also, Allah said in another surah, in Surah Al Ibrahim, He said, Wa ala Allahi mu'minun. To Allah, the reliance be upon. The believer rely upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. To Allah, do believers rely upon? And also, Allah said in another surah, in Surah Al Imran, "Faida azamta, fatawakal alala." When you make an intention, or you have something that you have already prepared to do, put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Waman ya tawakal alala. Anyone who put his trust on, uh, on Allah SWT, for who has what Allah is sufficient for you to, to, to have that firm belief that when you put your trust in him, he's sufficient for you because he's high you, liamut. He's ever living, he does not die. And whosoever puts his trust in Allah SWT, Allah is enough for him. For us to benefit from these verses, we should dwell in to some of the hadith that taught us how to rely upon Allah SWT. When you have the belief in Allah SWT, how to rely upon him, we look into the examples of our Nabil Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the hadith that was reported by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them both. Qala, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uridat alayya umam. Allah made the Rasul to, they show, he showed him uh, nations before him, before us, and nations that the nations other, of other prophets. Faraaitu nabiya wa ma'ahu ruhaitun wa nabiya ma'ahu rajulun wa rajulani. And he said, verily, I saw a prophet who had a very small group of people who are just less than about 10. And with him, another prophet was accompanied by only one person. Others, two. 
When Nabi Ulai Samawu Ahad, some other prophet has no one behind him. So, if Rufi Ali Sawadun Azim, and I will show another big crowd, the amount of people that he saw were so great that he thought that was his own followers, that is was his own ummah, that is us, from the Sahabas, the Tabin, and to the ones to our own, to the last generation. Hada Musa, and he was told that these are Musa's people. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Prophet Musa's people. Because when he saw the first set of people, they are very small in numbers, and others, one, another, two, other prophet has no even followers behind him, and they were shown a big crowd of people on the other side of the horizon. Then he thought he was his, that was his own nation, that was his own people. And they said, no, these are the, the Ummatul Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam. These are the people of Musa. Allah be pleased with him. Fa'idha sawadun adhifaqila li unzur illa ufuq al-akhar. And he was told to look another side. The number of people are more greater than the one he was already shown. That is the people of Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam. فَإِذَا سَوَادُ عَذِينَ فَقِيلَ لِي هَذِي هُمَّتُكِ And he, they were told that these are your own people. Imagine the number of people, we are so much that he was even imagined that these are his own people, that he was told, no, these are not yours. But when they showed him the other one, that are more greater than the one that he saw, and he said, they said, these are your own people. فَقِيلَ لِي And he, was say, he said, they told me, هَذِي هُمَّتُكِ these are your own people. Wama'ahum sabuna alfan. Yadhulun al janna bi gheri hisa wala azab. Among this nation, among these people of yours, 70,000 of them, they will enter paradise without judgment, nor any punishment. May Allah make us among them. So he stood up and he entered in his house, in his, in his, place, his dwelling, in his place. And people started to chatting about, about these people. You know, some were guessing, oh, this or so that. And some of them said, Maybe these are the companions of the Rasul. And some are guessing, Islam. Maybe these are the ones who are born in Islam. They never commit any adul uh, uh, adultery, that they never worship any other deity except Allah. They were born in Islam but never commit any shirk, that is idolatry. And they started saying things, getting, guessing at random. And the Prophet came out. And when he came out, and he asked them, What were you really saying about? What were you, what were you really talking about? And he was told, he was informed. They are those who do not make ruqya, that is blowing over themselves after reciting the Quran or some prayers and supplication. The Prophet used to say or seek it. That is, when someone recites Quran or make a supplication, some people make like this, will blow like this, maybe rub on their body. And this is what he was told. Fakala, he was the one I was explaining now to them, who among these 70,000 of people that will be uh, among the women that will never be going through the judgments or neither go through punishment. And he said, these are the ones who does not make rukia, that is when they're reading Quran or making supplication, they do not blow on themselves. Wa ala rabbihi 
And no seek it, no passive omens. That is when something happened, they will ne never say, oh, and maybe it's due to this or this or that. For example, if someone walk is going to, to town or is going somewhere, for example, you mistakenly you uh, hit your toe against the pave. Some will say, oh, because I, I hit my toe with my left, maybe something bad is going to happen. No, they don't believe in these things. They don't believe in this kind of things. Whether when you, something, a sign happens, like people say this is a sign, that's why it happened. So they, these are the, the kind of people that they don't believe in these things. They rely upon Allah SWT alone. And even when they recite the Quran, they do not blow on themselves. Or neither even when they make supplication, they do not blow upon themselves in order to relieve them from what they want to gain from, what, from that kind of uh, practice. And on this, a man called Ukasha, Fakama Ukasha ibn Mehsan, a man called Ukasha, and he stood up and he said, Fakala, Udu laha an yaj'al ni minhum, ya Rasulallah. Oh, you the prophet of Allah SWT, pray to Allah for me so that I will be among those people whom Allah will make them enter Jannah that the one Allah shown you among the 70,000 who will enter Jannah with, without going through the process of judgment and also punishment, neither of the grave or neither of the, of the helper. May Allah save, save us from that. And when Okasha said this statement, فقال, and the Prophet said, Anta minhum you will be among those people. SubhanAllah, what a big luck for someone to have this kind of blessing. A man that he does not say whatever that comes out of his own memory. He just think of something and say something. In He says what Allah inspired him. It's, it's an inspiration that Allah always gives him. So he will never say something that will go against Allah SWT uh, injunction or neither to go against the teachings of what he was sent to, to be. Then another man stood up and he asked the same favor to the Rasul. Oh yeah, you the prophet of Allah, make me also to be among those people. Rasulullah the prophet said, Sabaka kabiha ukasha. Ukasha has preceded. He has been the first person that's Ask this fever. So there is no, for you, no, not that he, he, not that Allah, the Prophet does not wish to make dua for him, but this is the chance when Allah SWT, they believe that Ukasha has. If you look according to what they believe that Ukasha have, and you know that this is the biggest chance, the biggest moment, that if he is, if he, 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 he gain the pleasure of Allah SWT and the Rasul, he will be among the successful ones. and. Allah know the, 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 the inspiration that he put on his prophet, that he will see the sincerity on the kind of person that he's asking you. That's why he grant him this wish, that you will be among those people. And what the other one he asked, he said, no, Okasha, Okasha has been pre as preceded over, uh, over you. He is the first to ask this favor. So that's the only chance available. So this had this mention about importance of faith. That is when we talk about Yaqin here, about faith, the belief in Allah SWT and also to rely upon him. And when you have true belief in Allah SWT, these are one of the qualities people will have that even though when sometimes they are practiced the Rasulullah taught us to do, but these people, because of total reliance upon Allah SWT, they do not want to go through that means. Although it's allowed, it's permissible. When you make like this, for example, when we go to bed, Rasul Salam taught us so that, so that we should blow into our palms and recite Kulu Allah three times, the Rabbi Falak three times, and Rabbi Nas three times, and rub all over his body. These are the practice, the practice of the Rasul Salam. Salam. And even if they are ill, normally they make Rukia upon themselves, but they will never blow upon themselves. But in the principle, the principle of the of, of the Sunnah. You can do so, it is allowed. It's not something bad, but, but these people, they don't go through that. They just make the dua and they leave everything in the hands of Allah SWT. 
I don't say brothers and sisters that you are listening, you should not do that. If you want, when you make your dua, you blow your palm, you want to make because you, want, you feel that that will give you a relief from because you believe in Allah that through that, Allah will invoke his blessing upon that. But these are the people of the 70,000 that are mentioned here. These are people when they recite the Quran or make a, a, a supplication, they never go through that kind of process to blow upon themselves they just rely upon Allah because they believe that Allah Samin Karib, he hears and is very close. He hears and he, he accepts the answer to the call of the caller. Yes. The conditions of the Prophet, the, 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 this, this condition was shown to the Prophet and he saw these people. And even in Islam, when someone is sick or is going through some kind of difficulty that needs Rukia, these are the people, they never go and ask for it. But in Islam, if you, someone offer it to you, it's not something that, it doesn't mean that you, you've, you've, uh, you've violated this principle. No, if someone offer it to you, as long as I do not, I did not ask for it, they offer it to you to make ruqya on you, accept it. Because they are invoking upon Allah SWT. It's allowed in Prophet Islam used to uh, even teach his sahabas, his companions about this. As long as you make ruqya to invoke the name of Allah is allowed. But when you request for it, it's something else. Because remember, if I do ruqya on you, or you do ruqya on me, and every time something happens, I continue going to you. Where is the reliance upon uh, rely, reliance on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? If we do believe in, believe in Him truly, because if someone has done ruqya on you, you have to do the continuation from there. You don't just stop there. You do the the the, the adhkar, the remembrance, the supplication that you should make that will strengthen that that kind of supplication. And also reading the Quran, leaving everything in the, in the hands of Allah so that, that anything that happens to you is by the permission of Allah. So that, that. Allah said, Kul len yusiba na, len yusiba na ila ma lana. Nothing will harm us except what Allah so that, has prescribed for us. And among the articles of faith, qada wa qadr. Know that anything that happens to you today or at this moment, or at any time, it's by the will of Allah SWT. This is what Rasulullah was saying to his cousin. He said, Ya Ghulam, Ihfad Billah Ya He said, Be God on Allah SWT. Be beware of Allah SWT. Allah will protect you. Ihfad Billah Ya Protect yourself from Allah SWT. Allah will protect you. Protect yourself from Allah SWT. You one day meet Allah SWT. You surely come to meet Allah SWT and account of your life. Anything, everything that you have done on this earth, you be, Allah SWT will account you for that. And know that if the whole Ummah gather to harm you, nothing will happen to you except by the permission of Allah SWT. If the whole world Gather, they made the plot, they made the plot to harm you. Allah, as long as He has not decreed that, don't ask me how, why, why will don't do, please, brother, do not ask this question. Allah said, when He does does not decree something about something, or when one, two people or three people are together, he will be the fourth person. Sec two people, he will be the third person. Four people will be the fifth person. So no amount of plots on earth or anywhere above and below or in between that will take place without Allah being in there in, in presence. Allah is, pre is present there. So if the whole world gather to harm you, nothing will happen to you except what Allah has prescribed for you. So, and also if, you, if the whole world gather to benefit you, to make you someone good looking or to be a good person or to, 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 to elevate you, nothing will, will 
elevate you or reach you that position, except if Allah SWT has prescribed for you for that reason. Not in Islam, reliance, when we talk about reliance on Allah SWT does not mean you should not, you should sit that fully, fully in your arms. You should find the asbab. That the means for you to get the, the protection of Allah SWT and to get what you want from Allah SWT by reciting the Quran and also making some supplication according to the kitab and sunnah, which is allowed. But these people that Allah showed him, they showed the Rasul about them being entering Jannah without being questioned or neither face the punishment of Allah SWT, of the hellfire. These are people, they follow the asbab, reading the Quran, read, making supplication, but they never blow upon themselves or neither blame themselves for something to happen if some they are on they are move they are moving around or something show like something uh, one or two things they see like the way people are saying this sign shows that oh this is not a good sign for me they don't believe in this they believe that if they don't get what they are going for or they don't they don't they cannot able to reach where they are going for is by the will of Allah Sondra. so they just continue from the if anything like that happened to you from the go just continue going if you hit your toe on the pavement or some kind of sign like our people are saying, or hear like a bird crying or something happen, from the just go. Put your trust in Allah SWT. And this is Allah is sufficient. That's why Allah said, Waman tawakkal ala Allah. Whoever trusts in Allah SWT, I rely upon I rely on Allah SWT for who has Allah is sufficient for you. And even if you are doing something for the sake of Allah SWT, that pleases Allah SWT and some, someone come and threaten you. This will happen to you. You will lose this, you will lose that, you will lose that. imana, and you increase and increase you in faith. And say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us. And surely you return with victory. You return by the permission of Allah SWT to see the promise of Allah SWT that he gave even to his sahabas when they were in the confederates. When they saw the signs, when they saw the, the promise of Allah SWT, they say, oh, this is what Allah promised us and the Rasul. So brothers and sisters, also the asbab I'm bringing to you that we, when we talk about reliance is constantly in dhikr, remembrance of Allah SWT, if we do believe in him. And when we make the dhikr, we leave everything in the hands of Allah SWT to take, care, to take care of everything. We don't have to do something in order to make it happen. It's Allah SWT that makes, makes it happen. Another hadith reported by Ibn Abbas, he's, uh, he said, Ana Rasulullah sallallahu sallam kana yaqul, he said the Prophet sallallahu sallam used to say these, state, these words. Allahumma laka aslamtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakkaltu wa ilayka anabtu wa bika khasamtu Allahumma inni a'udhu bi izzatika la ilaha ila anta tu tu dil ila anta an tu dilani anta al hayyu ladhi la yamut wal jinn wal insu yamutun you see the statements this completely referring the, the dua of this of Rasul, the supplication this Rasul Islam is teaching us here, goes back to Allah SWT. That, O oh Allah, to you I have submitted. Laka Aslam, to you I have submit, I have submitted. Or Bika Amantu, and you alone that I believe. Do I turn my, do I trust? Yes. I put my trust in you. To you do I turn. And for you, I argue, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you through your power. There is none worthy of worship except you alone, and that you safeguard me against going astray. You are the ever living, the one who sustains and protects all the exist, all that exists, whether mankind, angels, jinn, any living creature, the one who never dies. Allah does not go through this kind of thing that we are talking about death. He has no beginning, so he's the first. We are as human beings, and jinn will all die. So if you turn your supplication, your, your prayers, and your reliance to Allah, then Allah will give you this protection. 
That's why he said, for either azamta fatawakal Allah. If you made your mind upon something and make that intention, put your trust in Allah SWT. Rely on him. Do not find any second opinion. Your opinion will be only Allah. Rely on Allah alone, the one who does not die. Human being will help you, but will come to a time it will get fed up or tired or one day it will die. The gene that people go to and ask them for protection or help, they also, they, they are creature. They are creations from the creations of Allah SWT, they will one day die. They will even, they, they, have, they have a stop, they have a, a, a demarcation where they cannot go beyond that. But Allah is above everything. Another one, he was saying, Hasbun Allah wa ni'im wal wakil, kalaha Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, hina ulqiya fi nar. Wa kalaha Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hina kalu inna nasa qad jama'u laku faqshawun fazadahu imana wa kalu hasbun Allah wa ni'im al wakil. And when Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam was thrown into the fire, he was repeating this statement, that when something, someone says something doubtful, you know that you're doing the correct thing, please do not be shaken, do not be, be intimidated. Just say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'im wa kill. As long as you know that you're doing the right thing and Allah SWT approve of it, it's not something haram, it's not shirk, just rely on Allah SWT. That is not for you. Because Ibrahim, when he was calling his people to la ilaha illallah, and he was condemning the actions of his father and what the action that he took in order to, to humiliate their gods, and they all came together, they said this, has caused is, is an abomination. We will, we will, we will, we, our sanction will send him to death. They sentence him to death. And they set a furnace, a big fire, and he was thrown into the fire because of his belief. But guess what happened? With all that terrible, dangerous, and fearful that anyone that has been threatened not even threatened, and really it actually happened. They throw him into the fire. There is no hope for you. The only hope or reliance is on Allah. And that's why Ibrahim, and was, when he was thrown into the fire, he said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'im al wakil. Allah is sufficient for me. And that's the statement Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, repeated. When, they, when the people gathered against him, the Quraysh, the Mushrikeen, and, and their allies, they said they will come and wipe you off in order to frighten the Rasul and to give him up his, his mission. You know what he said? Hasbun Allah wa ni'im al wakil. Allah alone is sufficient for us and is the best disposer of affairs. Even in the worst of circumstances, one should always have faith and trust in Allah SWT. When things are not going according to your plan, but you know that this Allah SWT, you've, you've taken the asbab that it means for you to gain the favor and the protection of Allah SWT, and you see there is no way, there is no hope, just put your hope and trust in Allah SWT. Allah is sufficient for you. Another hadith reported by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, Anin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Janna aqwamun afida tu mithlu afida tu tayr. Some people will enter paradise, a group of people, both men and women, not only men, both men and women, whose heart, they will enter paradise, whose heart will be like the heart of birds. They will enter Jannah. May Allah make you and I become among them, including our parents. It has been said that these are the people who put their trust in Allah SWT. Another interpretation, they say these people are the ones who have tender hearted. They are tender-hearted people. So, when you have excellent trust in Allah SWT, and you, are, you have a kind heart that is always valuable, that has a, these valuable qualities, because both men and women have the right to enter Jannah. But when you have this quality, you will be among those people that Rasul Salsa mentioned here. And one should not worry about the food that you eat, the clothes that you wear and your sustenance. It belongs to Allah. Allah is the one who provides for you and I. In an hadith could see, the Prophet said, 
He said, Allah said, as long as his throne, as long as his majesty, his Godhead, he's been Allah, is still existing. So his, his power will never come to an end. Neither has a, a beginning or neither ending. Allah is always ever, is always in his, in his, in his, in his ma majesty as Allah. It's every day. I will, like we meet, let, let us use our common term. Like when someone is doing something to, to, to elevate them to Alpha, Allah is above all, 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 everything else. So there's nothing you can equate to Allah to say there's any weakness or, for example, as human being, we know we can eat and drink and we go through certain processes and we're tired, we're sick and we go, these are the weaknesses. Well, these not, Allah does not go through all these things. So it's him alone that we should rely on. And why they refer to the nest, their heart will be like the, the, the heart of a bird. The Prophet tell, told us in a uh, report, said in an hadith, he said, if we human being believe in Allah SWT, as the bird, the birds do, the birds, they have no farm, no place to grow or to plow or neither make their, to prepare food like we, like we human beings do, but they just set off from their home, empty stomach, empty belly, leaving their young chicks at home. They fly every corner of the, of the, of the, of the, of the area of the, of the, of the planet, of the globe in order to search for food. And they just leave their nest without having no farm out there. They have no place, no, no garden, no crop that is growing. And they just set off. And when they go, they get enough food Allah provide for them. And in fact, they bring some with their own stomach full and they bring some for their young chicks. If that kind of reliance is that we have, that this bird have for the sake of Allah SWT, is that kind of reliance we human beings have, Allah said he will bless us in a way that we never expect. Because we are always worried about what we eat or what we're going to eat tomorrow, what we're going to, uh, what I'm going to, even though we have enough in our closet, in our uh, wardrobes, we have enough in our kitchen, we still yearn for more, we still cry, crying for more. We're forgetting that Allah SWT, who are razak, he is the one who provides, who what in Matini, he is strong, Allah is irresistible. Nothing can make him diminish from his power, from his, from his uh, duties. And he has the treasure that will never shrink. It does not shrink. You might see that everything that you see around, oh, this is not sufficient, that the way the world, the international world, we are crying, oh, uh, the, the population of people are growing too much and uh, inflation and this and that. When there is true reliance on Allah SWT, <laughs> this kind of crime will not occur because human beings, we are greedy. We are greedy to ourselves and even if they bring the whole rich people, rich, the rich, the rich men, the rich people, both men and women around in the world, they put them together. They share the wealth equally. Wallahi, everyone will have, will, will be, it will suffice each and every one of us. But just because of a bunch of greedy, some greedy people are out there, they want to amass all the, the, the wealth of the world and they sit on it and they will be dictating on others. But if we rely on Allah SWT, minus their wealth, Allah can provide for us from, not from their own source in us, or from a, in a source that we never expect. How can that happen? Only when you rely on Allah SWT. So brothers and sisters, I will go one more hadith from this, because we have a lot to, to, to bring evidences, some um, hadith, so some of the examples of, of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that will motivate us, that will make us have a complete reliance, reliance on Allah SWT. But because of time, we cannot able to do as much, we do the best we can, but we cannot able to do everything that we need to do, we want to do at this time, because the time is very short and also it's better to gain something, no matter how small it is, we implement it 
and we work on it, and then we gain the mercy of Allah SWT and his acceptance. Another hadith from Jabir, anhu, from Jabir and Nahu, he said, Gaza ma an Nabi Sallallahu Kibala Najr. Falam I will read the hadith so that I will translate it for you. Falam Kafala Rasulullah Sallam Kafala Ma'ahum for Fadrakatum Kaila Tun Fiwadi Kathrati Kathirin Ida Ida Fanazala Rasulullah Sallam Watafaraka Nasu Yatasta Diluna Bishajara Wanazala Rasul Sallam Tahta Samura Fala Kabiha Saifahu Wanimna Naumatan Fa either Rasulullah Sallallahu Sallam Yaduna Fa وإذا عنده عربي فقال إن هذا اخترط علي صيفي وأنا نائم فاستيقظت وهو في يده صلتا قال ومن يمنعك مني قلت الله 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 ولم يعاقبه وجلس I translate to you this hadith an interesting thing that happened when Rasul Sassan went in an expedition Along with the prophets, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the direction of Najd, he went with his companions. He said, when the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned, I also returned with him. Then midday sleep overtook us in the valley full of pricky shrubs. That is a thorny uh, a place, has some kind of thorny uh, trees. The messenger of, Allah, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got down and the people scattered around seeking shade under the trees. Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi hung up his sword on the branch of a tree and he was sleeping while everyone was asleep. And suddenly the Rasul woke up from his sleep. He saw a man seize the sword that he took from the tree that the Prophet sallam hung, where he hung the sword. And the man seized his sword and he charged. And when he charged, this desert man, and he said, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this man brandished his sword over me while I was asleep. And I woke up and I saw it in his hand. You know how something that is very sharp and dangerous, when you trust, put it on someone, no mercy, you will see the outcome of it. And he asked, this man asked the Rasul, who will protect you from me? Imagine he has a weapon, of course, who do you think can protect him from him when he already has the opportunity? Just, just one press, just one push, he can harm the Rasul. He could be able to harm him. Who will protect you from me? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, said, I replied, the Prophet said, I replied, Allah, 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 three times. He did not, the man did not, could not be able to do anything and he just sat down. In another narration, Kunna ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi dhati riqa fa idha atayna ala shajarati dhalilatin taraknaha li Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa jaa rajulun min mushrikin min al-mushrikin wa sayfu wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muallaku bi shajara fa akhtalatahu fa akhtaratahu fa qala takhafuni qala la qala fa man yamnawka minni qala Allah that is the same, the same narration, just another different slight uh, explanation. But it goes the same way the Rasul was sleeping and all the Sabbaths were asleep. And this man came and he took the sword and he pushed, he, he took the sword from the tree and he, he charged it upon Rasul and he said, who will save you, protect you or save you from, from me today? And the Prophet replied, said, Allah, Allah. So to the end of the, what happened then? When he said, Faman yam nauka minni, who will protect you today? And the Rasul said, Allah, fasakata saifu min yedi. Then he saw, suddenly fell off. He came off from his hand without the Prophet Salaam touching him or neither using any skill or method in order to, to, like you said, to protect yourself or when you use any kind of people who, do, who are doing training, like karate or jiu-jitsu or whatever kind of uh, means in order to. Uh, to defend yourself. He did not use any defensive method. By that turn, he only said, Allah is the one that is protecting me. Allah is the one that I rely on at this time. And his sword fell off from his hand. And the Rasulullah took the sword and hold it like this. And the Rasulullah said, 
Mani ya muna uka mini. Who will save you? Who will protect you today? He, the, the titan against the, the, the enemy of Allah and the Rasul. And when the Rasul uh, all fell and the Rasul took the sword and he turned the sword towards this man and he said, who, who, who will save you today from me? Who will protect you from me? The only statement man could say, you see, the difference between belief and reliance on Allah is different from the one who does not believe in Allah. This person, the Rasul did not beg for mercy to free him or to save him or to beg him. He just said, Allah, because he asked the question, who will save you? Who can protect you? He said, Allah, Allah, Allah. And when he said that, he said, repeat that statement three times, Allah made that sword to fall, to fall off from the man's hand. And when he fell on the floor and the Rasul took the, 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 took the upper hand and took the sword and point, pointed the sword at this man and asked him, who will protect you? You know what he said? He said, Kun khair akhir. As soon as he said this, the, word, the, the sword fell from his hand and the message said, he asked him, who will protect you? And the man said, please forgive me. Kun khair akhir. That is, please forgive me. In the Arabic, it's a deep Arabic uh, terminology, but it means, please forgive me. He asked, he asked for forgiveness. Rasul Salaam never asked for forgiveness. On either, please say, uh, don't harm me. He just said, Allah, because he asked who will protect him. But this time, when the tide turned against him, he is begging out for mercy. We are his reliance. We are, we are his, who rely on uh, the two people, Rasul, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this man. The reliance come to, uh, that, the, that Rasul Sallallahu put in Allah SWT gave him the upper hand to, gain, to, to overcome his enemy. So that's why Allah said, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُ نَاسِ إِنَّ نَاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَقَالُوا فَزَادَهُمْ إِنَّ نَاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَقْشَهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِمَانًا And when people come gathered, or people come and threaten you and say, uh, people are preparing to come and harm you, and you repeat this statement, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah said, فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةِ مِنَ اللَّهِ They will return with success by the mercy of Allah SWT and the bounties of Allah SWT. So beside the Prophet's habit of pardoning and forgiving people for, uh, for, for people being, for their gracious attitude. This has had this mention, the utmost trust in Allah SWT. It tells us that one who has trust in Allah is helped by him. The one who does not trust in Allah <laughs> will have nowhere to be, uh, except Allah SWT has uh, uh, the, 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 the upper hand to change the tide. And later on the Bedouin mentioned in the Hadith, Embrace Islam because the Prophet Islam go on to the let me end it to the hadith where he said, Atashad, and he asked the man, Atashad, and an, an la ilaha illallah. Kala la. Do you bear witness that there is none worthy of praise and um, there is none worthy of worship except Allah? The man said, No. Walakin wahiduka an la ukatiluka. Then he said, But I promise you, I'll never fight you. And I will never, only thing I will promise, I will never be among those people who will fight against you. The man rejects to take the shahada, but he promised that he will ne no, neither harm the Rasul anymore to, pre uh, to prepare himself to harm the Rasul, or neither be on the side of those people who fight against Rasul. And the Prophet let him go. When he went back to his people, he said, I came from the best of mankind. And that man, when he went, after some time, they said he came back and took the shahada. So you see, brothers and sisters, how we, we are taught by the Rasul and his example, how to rely on Allah SWT. That, yes, if you are sick, you can read the Quran. You can make some supplication. When you're going to beg, you made your supplication. And when you are sick, they want to give you rukya, take it. This is asbab. Allah needs, yes. He allowed us to cure ourselves, to find means, ways and means. As long as they're according to the kitab and sunnah, we do not go beyond. And we do not uh, make any evil omen against ourselves when we are doing things. And when science shows, and we said, oh, this is going to happen to us, so I would, I would decide not to go, or I will not do this, because there is a, shan, a sign already shown that, the, a sign has shown to me that this will not be right. How do you know? Do you know that Allah has 
the power to make things happen the way you don't expect. And when we go to bed to rely on Allah, we call upon him. But these people, for them to gain this paradise, they did not, not that it's bad for you to blow on yourself as long as you're reciting the Quran and making supplication. That does not mean that you will not be among the people. The one thing is that uh, the, the people that uh, the Rasul Salam is mentioning, mentioned here about the one who did not take, do Rukia, they do not go to people and ask them for Rukia. Even though if they read the Quran, they even don't blow upon them themselves and they make their supplication. But they trust in Allah. They have already called upon him. They know that Allah, they believe that Allah Subhanahu will give them what they ask for. That's why Allah said, well, anni, if my servant asks you of me, O you Rasul, I will answer the call of the caller. But on one condition, condition let them first answer my call and believe in me and so that they will gain the guidance. Allah will give them the guidance, the hidayah to go through or succeed in whatever they want to succeed in. So brothers and sisters, if you doing Rukia, do not go to ask for someone for Rukia because you will not be in this category. But if someone offer it to you, do not refuse it because it's part of the Sunnah. And that will not mean that you you fall you are you are you've gone out of the, the track or out or you are away from this group of people that Rasul Salam mentioned here. The, the only thing you don't go and beg people to come and make rukia on you, or neither do things that will make you just only all the time rely upon this person or upon that, or you don't do things in order to say, oh, because of this, that's why this thing has happened to me. You don't blame bring any blame any bad omen upon yourself oh because this man some people i give you example before i go some people in back home in africa like i will give for sierra leone for example someone will bring their business to in the in the in the in the, in the stall in the market stall and they'll put it like this they will not only do some kind of uh, ceremony or some kind of sacrifice they will look at the first person that will come and buy if it's a black person who come and buy they say, no, don't give me the money. Give the money to this person. <laughs> Subhanallah. Say, give the money to this person, and the person will give me. So we do that, they said, oh, my luck is with the person that is, has a fear in, that is fair in complexion. Who taught you that this is the person that gives you? It's Allah. The, the provision comes from Allah. Some people, even when they come out of their home, there are certain things that should not, will, should not happen to them. When it happens to them, they will return back. They say, no, if I go, this thing will not rise. No. When you make your intention to go and you, you believe that Allah Sunnah is the one that gives you the, 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 the tawfiq and the hidayah, and also to give you the answer, rely on him. He will give you the answers. When you ask the answers, Allah will give you all the answers. Uh, uh, when you ask Allah Sunnah questions, Allah will answer them. Do not put your trust in a human being or neither a jinn or neither a sheikh or neither uh, uh, someone who say is a soothsayer or, or astrology. Put your trust in Allah SWT. For you to put your trust in Allah SWT is by reading the, the book of Allah SWT and trust and uh, rely on him. And also reading the supplications. There are so many supplications. I could have, I sh uh, if I had time, I, would have, I should have read a lot of them before going to bed, when going to the toilet. These are all tells you, tell you that it's showing the signs of reliance on Allah SWT. We don't need to hang something in our, in our houses in order to protect us. We say, Bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah. Bismillah wa lajna bismillah kharajna wa ala rabbina ya tawakkalna. By the, in the name of Allah SWT, we enter and we come out. So you give salam. You give the protection. The protection you are under the protection of Allah SWT. Even Rasul SAW said, when you go out of your home in the morning, or any time of the day, you say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, hawla quwata billah. The angels are there always, Allah will assign to you. They are special angels. They say, wukita, kufita. You is sufficient and Allah will protect you and you get what you want. Say, so I've said what I've said. I will ask Allah SWT to forgive me. Whatever I said that is the right thing is from Allah, from the guidance of Allah SWT. And whatever I said that is wrong, it's by my own mis by my own self and by the misguidance of the shaitan. May Allah guide me and guide you all and protect us and accept us all. 
Okay. Um, I always say this dua because this is a dua that Allah Allah we are praying for until we leave this planet. Allahumma inna nasaluka imanan kamilan, wa yaqinan sadiqan, wa qalban khasiyan, wa lisanan dhakiran, wa halalan toiban, wa tawbatan nasuhan, wa tawbatan qawla al-mawt, wa maghfirata wa rahta wa rahmata ba'da al-mawt, wa al-fawza bil-janna, wa najata min al-nar. Allahumma thalamna anfusana wa inlam taqfillana wa tarhamna na nakunan al-khasirin. اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعفو عنا ربنا أتنا في دنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار ربنا لا تزيق قلوبنا بعد إذا هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك نبنا وإليك المصير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك من المجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك من المجيد سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسيفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين